finding the right outfitter. This is uh, the topic that just, it's really hard to break down. And so I'm gonna try my best to break it down for you guys because everyone is different. Everyone likes different experiences. Everyone has different wants and needs from their, you know, bucket list, dream list of safaris, whether you're going to Africa, anywhere international, this is based off the same thing. But I'm gonna talk about find, finding your safari outfitter. <laughs> Finding the right outfitter. This is uh, the topic that just, it's really hard to break down. And so I'm gonna try my best to break it down for you guys because everyone is different. Everyone likes different experiences. Everyone has different wants and needs from their, you know, bucket list, dream list of safaris, whether you're going to Africa, anywhere international. This is based off the same thing. But I'm gonna talk about find, finding your safari outfitter. And the reason I want to bring this up is this weekend on a couple of Facebook groups, there was a guy that got on there and was ranting and raving about an outfitter. I have no idea who the outfitter is. He's not a part of any of the organizations I'm going to talk about here. Um, he was ranting and raving that this guy screwed him out of about, from what I got, there was about 26 grand that got you know, screwed out of on this. And it's, I don't know, the guy was saying that the, that the leopard permit didn't come in until like day 11 of 14, like it was a very shady deal. Um, and there was a lot of questions from people on there asking, well, why didn't you see this red flag? Why didn't you see this red flag? You know, so on and so forth. But the thing is, is a lot of people can get caught in the trap um, of falling for the wrong outfitter. And what I want to do is I want to break down how you find the right outfitter, how you watch out for the bad guys, um, and just what red flags to look for. So we're going to start out by using social media. And in all honesty, that's probably how this guy found this outfitter. Social media is such a great tool but it is also the downfall of a lot of things. Anyone and everyone, because it's a free platform, anyone and everyone can have a Facebook page, an Instagram page, a YouTube channel, TikTok, whatever it is, anyone and everyone can have it. And there's no verification really on it. Um, at one point in time, you could just buy the verification thing on Instagram for 15 bucks. Like, it kind of got rid of the purpose of the verification thing. And so, when it comes down to social media, it's a great tool to have. You can find out all that a lot of outfitters. You can see about things and, or see about outfitters and operations that you would have never really seen before, whether it's, you know, search on Google, like they weren't buying Google AdWords, so they weren't ranked at the top. They would have been on page 15 of South Africa outfitters. And they could be the great, like one of the best outfitters, but they're stuck on page 15 because their marketing didn't go very well for them. They didn't know how to market. They had a horrible website. There's just things like that that used to be, in the way of things. But now with social media, outfitters can brand themselves and put themselves out there as much as they possibly want to. Um, quite frankly, a lot of the really good ones are really slacking at it. Um, there's a lot of really good outfitters that don't do as much social media as they should. That should be part of their marketing strategy. Um, it's 2024, it's free to get on Instagram. And that's where a lot of eyes are between Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all that. Um, but when it comes down to social media, when you're looking for a good outfitter, or just looking for an outfitter first off. You have all sorts of options on there to look through. Um, you just type in South Africa hunting in the search bars and or South Africa outfitters or you know Africa hunting like and you'll get a lot of different a lot of different outfitters that pop up, a lot of different pages. You know, and then there's a few people that you might follow that they'll they'll tag or share. Like there's a couple pages that will share just a bunch of different outfitter stuff and show like the biggest Cape Buffalo shot and show a bunch of like the big kudu and stuff. There's pages like that that are out there that can help you find these outfitters. But when it comes to using it and utilizing social medias, take it with a grain of salt. Take everything that someone says with a grain of salt. 
like I've stated before, there's people out there that are quote unquote influencers, you know, trying to book hunts within South Africa, trying to promote outfitters that have only been to Africa once or twice, but they've only hunted with the same outfitter in the same place. And they really don't know the difference between good and bad. Like, I'm not trying to be mean, but they really don't. You have to know the bad to know the good, to be frankly honest with you, no matter what it is. Whether you're going to go test drive a car, um, you're, whether you're hiring contractors for construction work, you got to end up know, you're going to get burned before you know the, the good. That's just quite honest how it is. And you got to have hands on experience. Like, you're not going to take financial advice from a bum. You're going to take financial advice from Tony Robbins, people like that, or Warren Buffett. That's just the, the honest opinion on it, guys. Is there's a lot of people out there that have no skin in the game as far as knowledge and experience goes that are trying to promote and book so much stuff. And a lot of them are actually even not very good hunters themselves. They started five years ago. They're like they just, they're just trying to sell you guys because they have some sort of influence and some sort of brand, and they're trying to leverage that. Which is it's fine and dandy. Everyone needs to have a business, but. You gotta have some knowledge before you try to sell stuff. I'm not trying to teach you guys how to hunt coos deer. I've never hunted coos deer. I'm not trying to teach you guys how to hunt 200 inch mule deer because I've never shot a buck over 200. You know, guys like Jason Carter, Jason Campbell. Um, you know, there's several guys that are legit big mule deer hunters and legends at it that you should talk to you about if you want to learn how to kill a 200 inch mule deer. I'm not trying to teach you that. I'm trying to teach you guys how to find good outfitters all around the world, primarily focused on Africa. I have over 16 safaris. Have spent you know, 48 days in Africa at one point in time, continuous. I've done 33 international trips. Like I've done a lot of international hunts. and I do have a little bit of knowledge. You know, like I said, a little bit. There's people that have far more than me, but they're not on social media trying to teach you guys things. Um, what I'm trying to do is teach you what I've learned. So what I'm getting at here is use social media as a grain of salt. Even some of the stuff that I promote, guys, and I push doesn't match with everybody. The My style of hunting and my wants and needs are going to be different from other people's. That's the thing is you got to, when I look, like when I do my five safari questions, I ask people what the kind of experience they want, the species they want, are they going to do bow, time of month? Like I got to kind of have an idea of what they're looking to get out of it. And if I talk to someone that's interested in going to Africa, I say, well, what, what do you want to experience? Because there's one thing to say you want to hunt this, this, and this, but you could have two outfitters and one can be, can be the best of the best, taking the top quality trophies. But if you go with them and it's not the type of hunting that you like, it's probably not going to be that fun for you. You're probably not going to want to go back. You're not going to refer them to a friend. Sure, you might get you know that 60-inch kudu, but you might not enjoy the hunt and the experience. Whether Jimmy over here takes you on a hunt and you shoot a 55-inch kudu, but you love the experience, you love the way the hunt went down, and you're just so excited to go back and tell your friends. Everybody has their own cup of tea. Some people like bow hunting. Some people like spot and stock. Some people like rifle hunting. You know, it's it's just kind of. There's, there's tailored hunts fit to everyone's needs, and there's outfitters that can cater to anyone and everyone out there. But you just got to know what you're looking for. So use social media with a grain of salt, but also study it. Like, see what the outfitters post and see if you can mesh with them. See if you kind of build, like, a personal experience with them. That's kind of, like, why I segue over here to the, the trade shows. Safari Club International has their annual convention every year. It's going to be back in Nashville, Tennessee in 2025. That is a place for you guys to go and actually get to meet these outfitters. Sit down with them, learn how they are, see if you mesh with them. You'll probably have a beer with them after the show's over, go to the bar, go to dinner. You know, you might spend a few days talking to them. This is where you get to learn and mesh with them. So by going to Safari Club International, becoming a member of SCI and going to the convention, you get to meet a lot of great outfitters. There's so many outfitters from all around the world. This thing. The most important thing is you get to talk to them. You get to see face-to-face -face action with them. You're gonna probably talk to the owner. You might have your pH there. The owner might be your pH if they're a smaller business. You're just gonna to get to learn if you're gonna mesh with these people. And that's what I highly recommend you do is go to SEI, the Safari Club International Convention, and sit down and talk to them. Again, there's so many outfitters there that they're not all vetted. Like, that's the thing. They're not all vetted. There's gonna be some, there's gonna be some outfitters there that you're not gonna mesh with, but someone else's type of deal is what I'm getting at. There's different outfitters for different people. So use the trade shows, go to the trade shows, talk to the guys, sit down with them, talk with them, you know, tell them the experience that you want, see if they offer the experience that you want, and go from there. Another big thing is when you get to these trade shows, you got to have kind of a game plan because it could be overwhelming. So just go in, you know, get the directory and look up all the outfitters, 
whether it's with South Africa, Zimbabwe, Namibia, wherever you want to go, find all those outfitters and maybe get on the, the websites beforehand, pick and choose which ones you want to go meet to first and really set a goal to go and talk to these people because you can get bogged down and overwhelmed with the amount of wonderful taxonomy, gun displays, furniture, anything and everything is there. So make sure you go into it with a game plan. The next best way for me personally is by word of mouth through a friend. You know, it's 2024, whether you're best friends with somebody, you live in the same town, you hang out with them, you're going to have a friend that's gone and done this. Whether you're friends with them on social media or like legit friends, you've actually met the person. Um, this is kind of going back to the social media side of things, but have someone that you know, like maybe you follow someone you've met once or twice, maybe at another trade show, you share the same passions as them and they went to Africa. Maybe you think that you mesh with them well, you like the style of hunting they do, and they went to Africa. Talk to them about the outfit they went with. Talk to them, ask them questions. Dive really deep into your friend groups and you know your, your social media friend groups as well to, to talk to them and ask them how they enjoyed the outfit or what it was like. Really ask a lot of questions. That's all this is about, is asking a lot of questions, whether it's through social media, trade shows, via email, via WhatsApp. Ask as many questions as possible because that's how you're gonna get your answers. The quality of your questions determines the quality of your answers. And so ask questions, you know, maybe you don't want to sit in a blind, see if there's any spot and stock availability for bow hunting. Um, maybe you want more mountainous hunting, maybe you don't want it to be super thick, so Limpopo province might be out for you. Maybe you're going to go to KwaZulu Natal. Uh, maybe you want to do more of the Kalahari scene, or you want to have more, you know, it's just different types of habitats and different species live in different places. You're not going to go to one place in South Africa and hunt every available species, even within South Africa. You know, the blue diker and Valerie buck, they're in different areas. The Cape Grice buck and the sharp Grice buck, they're in different areas. There's no dick dicks in South Africa. As many people think that you can just go shoot a dick dick and a blue diker on the same hunt in South Africa, not possible. Uh, so really do your homework that way and really ask good questions. Break down what you want, what kind of experience you want to have. You know, and as I mentioned during the trade show thing is find these outfitters and get on Google. Google the hell out of them. You know, you'll see... You know, Google the Outfitter and look at the Outfitter's website. But also, if you Google the Outfitter and there's either some bad or good reviews on them, there's several different forums out there that if you search an Outfitter's name, sometimes those form um, pages with their with their name involved in it will be towards the top of the Google list. And uh, you can get on there and read about whether the person had a good experience, bad experience, why they had a bad experience. Because again, just because someone else has a bad experience doesn't mean that you're going to have a bad experience. Because a lot of people have to go into it thinking, having different wants and needs. And when those wants and needs are met, they consider that a bad experience, which it is, but it's also their fault for not properly planning the trip ahead of time. So go into it well, well informed on what you want and really relay that to the outfitter. So use Google as a tool. Again, you got to use Google for the heavy grain of salt. Social media and Google, you need to use the biggest grain of salt ever because anyone has an opinion can be on the internet and anyone that has an opinion will be on social media. So just take all that with a grain of salt, but use those tools to help you find the outfitters. Outfitters will have re, uh, referral lists. And uh, I used to be like, don't use a referral list because everyone that's on the referral list probably had a good experience. But I actually got put on a referral list that I had a bad experience with. Um, the outfitter was not a good outfitter, but his area was incredible. But I got still put on the referral list. And I've had several guys contact me asking about the hunt. And I tell them like, hey, the outfitter, it's, this is what you're going to need to expect. You're not going to do this, 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 and this. It's going to be like this. But the area and the quality of animals there is incredible. So as long as you go into it with the right mindset and the right framework, you're going to have a good hunt. That's why I tell them all the time if they call me on that. Um, so re reference lists are good. Um, again, I feel like most people on reference lists are going to have opinions about it being great. They're going to be you know, buddies or whatnot. So just take that with a grain of salt as well. But also remember that like, if you just ask them to be honest with you, what was good and what was bad, they'll probably tell you every little bit, even though they really enjoyed the hunt, there might've been a few things that they didn't like, you know, as far as experience wise goes, you know, and as far as Africa goes, there's different organizations throughout, you know, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, and maybe there's different organizations that you can get on, you know, the professional hunters organizations and find outfitters that are a part of those organizations. Those ones are primarily going to be legit good outfitters because the country is allowing them on their thing. They're a member of it. Um, they're they're a supported outfitter and a supported company. 
Then there's the African Professional Hunters Association where you can get on there and research outfitters, research professional hunters, see if there's any reviews or just see if they're even on there really. And if they're not on there, you can draw like not every good outfitter, not every good pH is on there because um, I know some great ones that aren't on there and I know some really great ones that are. But uh, that's another one. Just get on there. Do your research that way. Again, going back to this thing this weekend, the outfitter that this gentleman was talking about was not on any of these organizations' websites through the country, through the continent, you know, African Professional Hunters Organization. He wasn't a part of any of those. His name didn't ring a bell. His outfitting business didn't come up. And there is fly-by-night shady fellas all over, not just Africa. There's shady guys in Asia, shady guys in New Zealand, South America, and here in North America. A lot of them, everywhere. So you just got to remember, it's not just Africa. Not all Africa outfitters are crooks. They're not out to get you. There's bad outfitters everywhere. So keep that in mind. But use these organizations and these associations to kind of do a little vetting. See if they're a part of these you know, groups. See if they're a paid member of this association. See if the association supports them. Because that's a, that's a big thing is if the government or the the country association is going to support that outfitter it highly there's a highly there's a high probability that they are a very well trustworthy outfitter you know and as i mentioned there's lots of forums you can get on forums and look into things and again everyone has an opinion and it sometimes it's a bloodbath on these forums um i used to never spend much time on them i spend a little bit more time on them now and sometimes i just wonder why because it's just a brutal blood bloodbath between Guys that didn't have a great experience, guys that had a great experience. I'll see guys arguing about one outfitter. Like some guy will say, like, don't go with this person. And then some guy will be like, well, I had a great experience with them. Again, everyone has different wants and needs. You got to remember that. Everyone has different boxes to check, whether it's accommodations, whether they want a luxurious lodge or cool with a tent to camp, whether it's size of property. Some guys, like, you know, me personally, I like hunting big properties, especially when you're in South Africa and they're fenced. Um, I'd rather hunt a bigger property. Some guys want to sit water with a bow. Some guys want to do spot and stock with a bow. Different people have different styles of hunting that want that fit their wants and needs. So just remember, to take everything with a grain of salt. You know, when you're reading these comments, just think, analyze why these people didn't have great hunts, and analyze why these people had great hunts, and ask them like, what did you like so much about it, or what didn't you like so much about it? Just remember, your quality of your questions determines the quality of your answers when it comes to these things. And there's a lot of great forums out there to spend a lot of time on. You could spend hours, days, and decades on these things trying to get caught up on subjects and topics. But there's a bunch of different tools that you can use. Facebook and Instagram, social media. Your friends, whether that's friends through social media or your personal friends that you've known for a long time. Reference lists. You got good old Google. You have YouTube, which I haven't really mentioned yet. YouTube's a good one. Type in South Africa hunts and you'll get hundreds of, uh, if not thousands of South African hunting videos, watch them. By watching a hunt on YouTube, you can see how the outfitter runs their show. Sure, it could be a lot of edited in their content, but you get a good idea whether they're shooting from the truck, what, what the camp looks like, what the food looks like, and the quality of animals. Um, so use YouTube as your advantage as well. I think that one's kind of the best one to see the inside look of how the, the hunting operation is ran. And then you're going to have then you're going to have websites and forums. And that's why I've created simsafaris.com. Um, it's a free website for you to get on and see pre-vetted outfitters that I have hunted with, I've experienced, and that I'm very good friends with. Um, again, I have a different style of hunting than most people like, but I'm also, I also try to think of that and cater towards different styles of hunting. Like I have some buddies that hunt a little bit different than I would like, but I'm very good friends with them. I've been with them multiple times. I send a lot of people to them every year. Um, they hunt a little bit different than I like, but the people I send to them have that same style of hunting that they like. They enjoy the, you know, the more relaxed, laid back pool. Like they enjoy that type of stuff. They enjoy the, the type of hunting they do and they're perfectly fine with it. So that's why I still send people to them. I'm really good friends with them. You know, I wish they would do, I, I, no, okay. I don't wish they would do things different cause that's how they do it and that's how they run their business. But for me, when I'm going to go, I want to do things just a little bit different, you know, so I have outfitters on my site that I just truly believe run good operations and have the options for everyone. They have good camps, whether it's tented or lodge style camps. They have good staff, great food, good areas, and good game. Um, to me, it's just, there's so many outfitters out there, you can't vet them all, and there's so many different opinions. Like I said, my opinion is my opinion, and 
when I try to help people out, I just want to give them my the best of my knowledge that fits their wants and needs. So check out simsafaris.com. I have all these outfitters on there. Um, but adding a few more to, at the end of this year. Got a big trip coming up in August. Go check a few places out for you guys. And uh, I just try to provide the, the information to help you guys find the right outfitters and have the most success when booking a hunt. Not success on the hunt, but when booking the hunt, whether that's through travel agents, taxonomists, import brokers. I try to help you guys out and mitigate the headache that comes with that because there's a big learning curve. And like I said, I've done 33 international hunts. I've experienced a lot of ups and downs throughout those hunts, whether it's at outfitters, taxonomist, um, travel agents, brokers, all that type of stuff. And so I just try to help you guys by sharing what I've learned through my trials and tribulations of doing all these hunts and to save you guys some money. That way you don't got to go on a hunt that has been your dream hunt, your once in a lifetime hunt. And in the end, it costs you more money and you didn't enjoy it. Like there's nothing more than I hate is someone coming back from Africa saying they're never going to go back again and bashing on it because they didn't do the research or they didn't have the help that could get them into the right outfitter. And that's what I'm trying to do is provide you guys with the knowledge and the information that I've learned over these going on 17 years of international hunting um, all around the world, 33 plus international trips, 16 plus to Africa. And I'm just trying to bring this information to you guys to help you have a better experience when booking that first or next safari. So guys, check out simsafaris.com. Stay tuned for more videos here on YouTube. Follow us on social media. And good luck on your first or next safari.